All right, of course it's a problem. <laughs> If 100 parts per million kills you quickly, then 50 parts per million, okay, not as quickly, but it's not good. Um, why is this a problem? It's randomly, it can go randomly either way. Why are the people on here, why are the people over on this low concentration side worried? Yeah? There's more of a likelihood that something will flow from a high concentration to a low concentration. Why is that? Because there's more of a, there, there's like a higher concentration on this deadly side of the room, and that means that there are more molecules of RC gas that are likely to flow through the hole on this side than molecules of RC gas. Right. If I ask you where, I, I say there's an RC molecule right at the hole right now, where did that come from? 10,000 times more likely to have come from that side. It can go either way. So it'll go, the, it'll go either way, but the ones that go this way are 10,000 times more likely to have come from there than to come from here. And that means the ones that go into this room are coming almost all from over here and that means it's flowing, it's diffusing. It's the word you use is diffusion. It's a random process. The reason I like to bring this up is because People have the feeling that something is forcing molecules to move through the hole and there isn't anything. They get to the hole and they're just being randomly bounced around. The only reason there's a flow from this side to that side is that it's more likely to happen than the reverse. It's exactly the same as the coin flipping. The reason there's more likely to be, 80, to be 79 heads than 81 is because we were out of equilibrium and so there was a difference in the concentration of heads, if you want to put it that way. Just like in this room, there's a difference in the concentration of arsine, at least in that story up there. Yeah? Um, does diffusion increase or decrease entropy? So, when you go from a, a less likely state, 80 heads, and 20 tails, if I throw these coins on the ground, 80 heads and 20 tails is less likely, fewer microstates than 50-50. So the entropy for 80 heads and 20 tails is smaller than the equilibrium entropy. When I start randomly flipping things, I go toward equilibrium. 79 is more likely. So what happens to the entropy as you head toward equilibrium is that it goes up. The entropy will be larger if you distribute these particles that are over here, the arsine, equally throughout the room. There will be more microstates. So, it's a less so the entropy is going up as diffusion happens. And you could say that the reason it's going up is statistical. The statistics is in, is in what I told you, which is when an arsine molecule is at the hole, it can randomly go either way. So it's like the coin flip. It's the same thing. But it ends up going toward a more likely final macroscopic state because the entropy is higher or because there are more microstates associated with the evenly distributed uh, set of molecules. Yeah. So when it's equally likely that molecules uh, will flow from one side to the other and like it flow from left to right as le right to left, that would mean that it's more random, meaning the entropy increases? Uh, so I, I'm not sure exactly what you're talking about. What I was saying was any one molecule is equally likely to go one way or the other. But the end result of that, because there's so many more over here, is that if you find a molecule going through the hole, it's almost certainly, it almost certainly came from that side and is going that way. Okay. 10,000 times more come from here and are going that way than come from here and are going that way. Just because there's 10,000 times more of them over here. So, so that is the sense in which diffusion is random and also that if you're at a state that's out of equilibrium, 
the most probable thing is that it will head toward equilibrium. And heading toward equilibrium means the number of microstates goes up, which means the entropy goes up. <coughs> so when things are out of equilibrium, you find the entropy going up as they come toward equilibrium. This is for isolated systems, which is I'm dealing with here. Yeah. So I understand the whole um, of trying to achieve equilibrium, but I feel like that our 100 coin example is like a counterexample to that because still the most probable like end result is that you return back to 80 heads and 20 tails if you were to add up the probability, not that you were to like continue going towards 50 heads and 50 tails, which would be like the original equilibrium for the first state. So you're right that the most probable thing, slightly, is that you stay where you are. Now, we can, I mean, to decide whether we're moving forward or away from equilibrium, I have to keep doing this. I have to keep flipping coins. And if I keep flipping coins and keep doing this, what do you think will happen? If it's 80 and 20, What's your intuition tell you? I grab a coin every second and flip it. Grab a coin every second and flip it at random. What direction do you think we're headed? Toward the 50-50. If you continue this, you're right. The first step makes it look like... It looks like it's heading back to 80-20. Right. But it isn't heading back. It is the probability... First of all, it started out at 80-20. And now the probability is highest for 80-20. For but but has sh the, the, the bulk of the probability or the kind of average probability is now moving that way. Because this is this probability for 79. Sorry, this is 80, this is 81. This is 79. 79 is almost as big as 80. And 81 is a lot smaller. And so, you know, in, in some sense, the probability is shifting that way. I, I can't see it in the first step with a small number of coins, but eventually you would see it. So that's our microscopic picture of entropy. And, and why, in fact, statistics is the thing that, that seems to work. <laughs> and I'll just say seems to work. I mean, it's, a, it's a, a, a guess that we can treat particles that are hitting each other as, as behaving randomly. It's also a guess that the equal that each microstate is equally likely. If it's a possible microstate, then it's just as likely as any other possible microstate. Just like it's a guess that if I flip a coin, it's half heads, half the time it's heads and half the time it's tails. That guess can be wrong. I can have a coin that's fixed, but I can't fix nature apparently so that that's wrong. Equal microstate, I mean each microstate is equally likely. Each possible microstate. And as soon as you have that idea, then you can use statistics from then on. We have also, not just diffusion, that's particle flow, we've also used statistics for heat flow. Not, we've used the results of statistics for heat flow. If you have a hot object, high temperature, next to uh, touching a colder object, lower temperature, then the hot object has energy per mode that's really high. Each mode has a lot of more energy than the colder object. Well, statistically, the most likely thing is for each mode to have the same amount of energy. They'll swap energy back and forth, and the most probable thing is for each mode to have the same amount of energy. That is exactly the only reason why heat flows from a high temperature, where each mode has a lot of energy, to a low temperature, where each mode has a little energy, just because it's the most likely thing to happen. It's statistically likely that particles get shared throughout the room, 
that heat gets shared throughout all the modes. I mean energy, thermal energy gets shared throughout all the modes. Those are just statistical things. Well, that's our, that's thermal energy, bond energy I have written down here. We've already talked about macroscopic uh, thermodynamics. Uh, let me leave any review or anything to other reviews since everybody's getting up and leaving.